Getting around Bangkok can truly make your life into plane, trains, and automobiles. The best way around town is a scooter, but the problem is, is that you can't really get a couple on a scooter. And I kind of want control anyway. But to be real, a numero uno choice is to call a car from an app. But in Bangkok, that experience is not reliable. There is no Uber and there is no Lyft. But they do have a local app called Grab. The only problem with Grab, at least for me, is that they rejected my credit cards. They accepted DBs, but not mine, despite the fact that it's the same account. And if you try to get a grab between 4 and 7 p.m. We got fresh air, we got sunshine, we got a beautiful day. Forget about that shit. The tuk-tuks are fun, but the drivers are trying to take you to where they want to go, i.e. a tourist trap, not where you want to go or ask for. So the most consistent and convenient choices are your own two feet and some combination of the BTS SkyTrain and the MRT subway. That was the choice we made on this day to get to the original mall. I did neglect to mention that a typhoon was making its way on land, but the rain had held so far. Onoru, meantime, is headed for Thailand. Heavy rain is already falling in the province of Ubon Ratchatani. That's one of the areas expected to be worst hit. We didn't have far to go, but the rain got us anyway. So we're coming from the original mall, um, this really cool light park space slash coffee shop slash bar slash, it's a lot of things, galleries. Either way, we got caught in the rain coming here and I don't think you can see it, but like, my, I'm soaked. Perhaps DB can explain this better. Before the digital age of Amazon and TikTok, the Central Store was a meetup hub for local artists and international travelers coming through mid 20th century Bangkok. One could pick up daily essentials and discourse with other patrons on current happenings at the same time. All of this was due to the large selection of newly specialized print media the Central Store offered at the time. Now, the first and second floors of the Central Store become a museum, along with a coffee shop, bar, and music space, housing those major print magazines and newspapers that defined the era and its events. Now, Xennials can sip a beverage of their choice and browse the archive, which helped usher in modern fashion, art, and music to an earlier generation. There's just so many like cute little books here. They have these like little guides to like albums, al famous albums, like Bloomsbury Guide. This is the Put guide to, the, um, to Liz Fair's to the, the guide. We have um, The Suburbs by Arcade Fire. There's lots of great documents here of, of uh, music and cinema um, and fashion and design. I mean, you have a French document here of Marilyn Monroe's suicide. Buddy can take uh, the staggering feelings of depression and confinement and loneliness. And, uh, Put a cute spin on it. Maratosi can do it. This is truly remarkable artwork.
Thai artist Mara Toei's first major solo show, Lonely Girls, kicked off at the Central Store's exhibit hall. Here, Mara Toei joins previous artists, such as writer Sylvia Plath, exploring feelings of young women dealing with isolation and societal pressures in a large city setting. Through paintings and sculpture, icons such as Sailor Moon and Mona Lisa are reinvented into boxy minifigures with long faces, all while retaining their sense of adorability, perhaps reflecting feelings of sadness and constraint while having to maintain a pleasant and attractive posture. What is a trip down Nostalgia Lane without being able to view some other fun artifacts? The Memory Bank exhibit at Central Store showcased all the toys, games, and taste offerings the store offered mainly in the late 20th century, such as early video game relics, Hello Kitty Sanrio goodies, and Cabbage Patch Kids, with a good old early taste of the kernel thrown in there. Perhaps reminiscent of early bad eating habits? This is definitely memorabilia any 80s kid, such as myself, would appreciate. I'm visiting Goja Gallery and Cafe on the Solo Dolo. I was trepidatious because the show featured both a beat cipher and turntablism. Hallmarks of underground hip hop that I deeply respect. However, this type of hip hop seems like it's done for the white gaze at this point. The white gaze is unable to deal with the realities of more quote unquote ghetto or commercial styles of rap. I was reassured seeing one of the performers on the door. They were doing this for their scene and repping for their culture. After a warm up DJ set, the beat cipher was on. Both proud building, yeah. technically proficient. I love the set by DJ Katero, but it was time to push off to dancier environs. I couldn't believe that my grab got dirty just when he kicked in the drum and bass. The minute I stepped out the grab at Studio M, I felt like I was transported to another planet. It was filled with native Thailanders, rowdy bat peppers, people who got lost going to a rooftop bar, ended up in a basement and liked it better there. The DJ just encouraged this vibe of this location. He made it united to all of us. It was house music. It was house music of any sort, generation, and mood.
If you find yourself wandering down a dark alley that houses a jam cafe, you should stop in. And if you're lucky like I was, you may find yourself at a wild grindcore power violence show, thanks to Bangkok Power Violence. The minute you walk up, you can tell that this small room is about to explode. It's nice to see a DIY scene that rests itself to the fullest. Bands such as face melting. Psy Hammer. Gottfester. And HH. E E Cheek, I think I said that right, made this a show worth remembering forever. I couldn't even make it to the hairliner because the show was so brutal. I needed a rest for this crazy weekend in Bangkok. <laughs>